Just starting your adoption journey and not really sure which type of adoption is best for you? Well, stick around, friend, because today I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step process where you can determine which type of adoption is right for your family. Well, hello there. If we haven't met yet, my name is Amanda and I'm an adoption profile expert. I help other hopeful adoptive families learn how to create their adoption profile and share it with expectant families. I've spent well over a thousand hours talking with expectant families to understand what they're looking for in adoption profiles and what really makes them feel the most comfortable in choosing a hopeful adoptive family to match with. I put all of that expertise and my deep passion for adoption into easy step-by-step resources for you to leverage throughout your adoption journey. If you haven't taken a moment yet to subscribe, I really would appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, click the little bell icon and ring it so that you get notified each and every time we release a new episode. I remember when I was just starting my adoption journey, I was so confused on what to do, where to go. And I felt like I was spending hours upon hours on Google trying to find the answer to my questions. And way back in in those days, back in 2013, 14, when I began my adoption journey, there really just weren't a lot of options. And so I ended up having to pay an attorney to sit down with them and really talk through the process. And at $500 an hour, friend, let me me tell you, that was not a cheap endeavor. But they were, you know, of course, really patient and answered every little question that I had. But when I was going through the process, I just was convinced there had to be a better way. That's the reason why I created this YouTube channel, the podcast, the Facebook group, and and all of the other resources to help you walk through the process. Because I know when you're just starting out, it can feel really confusing. People are using words that aren't straightforward, that don't really mean anything outside the adoption sphere. And quite honestly, even if I use a particular word to describe something in the adoption space, doesn't mean that some other adoption professional is using the same word. So that can even create a lot more confusion. So that's the reason why today we're going to walk through the process from start to finish of picking your adoption route. Some other people might call it your method of matching. So are you using an agency, an attorney, a consultant, or are you self-matching? Those are the primary ways when it comes to private demand domestic adoption, that people match their adoption. And I know it can be really confusing to figure out which right, which path is right for your family. So that's what I'm going to walk you through today. There are four steps to the process of choosing which adoption path or method of matching is right for you. Step number one, I really feel strongly that you need to get a baseline understanding of each of the different types of matching that do exist. I have videos and podcasts as resources for you to walk you through each one of them more in depth, but I'm going to give you a high level overview of what they are and a little bit about how they work. But I really do suggest that you spend some time and go back and watch those other videos um, so that I can help you through the process. Okay. So the first option that is probably the most common option, but is definitely more on the expensive side, but yet not the most expensive would be an adoption agency. So this is something that most people assume is the only way to adopt, quite honestly. When it comes to adoption agencies, there are a very huge variety of different types of adoption agencies out there. There are adoption agencies that will match with you and that will walk you through the entire process from start to finish. There are adoption agencies out there that specialize specifically in finding birth parents and that those adoption agencies then are very selective about the parents or the hopeful adoptive parents that they're matching with um, so that they can, you know, kind of match people a little bit faster. And there are even some adoption agencies that are out there that'll just basically process the paperwork for you that kind of put the burden of all of the other steps of the adoption process on you to determine. Um, so that is really kind of adoption agencies in a nutshell, but primarily when people say adoption agencies and when hopeful adoptive parents think of adoption agencies, they're thinking of full service agencies, agencies that are going to help you everything from home study to, um, you know, making your profile and matching with an expectant family, supporting the expectant family throughout the journey, and then finalizing your adoption. That is what most people assume as a traditional advertise, or excuse me, uh, 
adoption agency. Um, next, the other option are attorneys. Now, attorneys can have a dual role in the adoption process. They can play a role, of course, as it relates to making your adoption legal. But there are also some states and some attorneys that will act as kind of facilitators, right? They are also going to be looking for expectant parents to match with and hopeful adoptive parents and matching the two together. Now, um, each, you know, different type has their pros and cons, but this tends to be a little less expensive than an adoption agency. However, it tends to take a little bit longer to match this route just simply because adoption attorneys uh, don't really have the advertising or the marketing arm behind it like an adoption agency does. So if I were thinking about a continuum of expense here, I would kind of put adoption agency as kind of the most, uh, or not the most expensive, the third most expensive of what we're going to review today. And then kind of right behind that would be adoption attorneys. Okay, so now let's go all the way to the far end of the spectrum and talk about the most expensive option, which would be an adoption consultant. So an adoption consultant's job is to represent your family to multiple adoption agencies, meaning they're going to have a network of, call it at least 10, if not upwards of 30 smaller adoption agencies scattered around the U.S. that they are going to be partners with. And they're going to take your information, the adoption consultant will take your information and share it with the adoption agencies and say, we have this expectant family or this hopeful adoptive family, and we are looking for an expectant family that that matches these criteria or that is looking for a hopeful adoptive family that matches these criteria. And so they're looking and they're casting a wider net for you. They're looking across the U.S. in a bigger fashion. Now, obviously, you have to pay the adoption consultant for their time, and that'll range anywhere from $1,500 to like $10,000, as well as you're also paying the adoption agency fees. Now, Theoretically, an adoption consultant should match you faster because you are then uh, being shared, your profile is being shared with more adoption agencies. But that doesn't always necessarily happen. It really just kind of depends. Um, I would say way back in the day when I first started my adoption process, that was definitely the case. An adoption consultant would definitely match you faster. Um, but these days, that's just not necessarily the case. The marketing oomph that each one of these potential uh, partners has behind them really does have a large role to play within that. And I can make a whole nother video, a whole nother series about just specifically that, about how you want to make sure that you're getting your profile shared and being seen by the right audience in enough times, um, because that really does have an impact. But from an adoption consultant perspective, theoretically, they should be matching you faster. And again, if we're thinking about the overall uh, continuum of cost, the adoption consultant would be the most expensive. Then kind of next down on that rung, if you will, would be an adoption agency followed by an adoption attorney. And the least expensive would be self-matching your adoption. Now, self-matching your adoption has really become way more popular here in probably the last, I don't know, three to five years or so because of social media and because there are ways where people on a more mass scale can communicate person to person, right? And we can connect through social media and other forms of um, in-person connection as well in order to self-match your adoption. Now, what's really important for you to hear me say is that you still have laws and processes that you must follow through the self-matching journey. You will require a, an adoption attorney for sure to make your adoption legal. And if you really wanted to, I suppose that's the only partner you would have to use outside of a, a home study professional. Let me correct myself. A home study professional and adoption attorney. Those would be the absolute cheapest ways to self-match your adoption. Now, there are pros and cons to self-matching your adoption. The, the con is that 
you have a lot of vetting that you need to do that traditionally an agency would be doing. An agency would be making sure that this person does intend to match, that they do have, you know, a viable pregnancy, that they have support along their journey, you know, pre, during, and post the adoption process, and that they are ultimately set up for the most uh, successful outcome, whatever that might be. Now, when you are going through a self-matching journey, you're doing that yourself, but there are resources and adoption partners or professionals that you can surround yourself with on a, what I kind of call an a la carte basis, which means that you pick and choose which services you need and when so that you can be more in control of the cost. When you're working in a traditional agency model, they're going to say there's one lump sum fee for creating your profile. There's one lump sum fee for sharing your profile, one lump sum fee for an attorney. But if you are self-matching your adoption, you can go and find the appropriate professionals to help you and put together the budget that quite honestly works best for you rather than paying, you know, a a standard $10,000 flat fee to do X, Y, or Z. So again, there are several different options, self-matching being on kind of the lower end from a cost perspective, but it does still require a lot of effort from you, right? So you do have to weigh kind of time and money. I would not be discouraged thinking that self-matching is going to take a lot more time because actually I'm not seeing that to be the case. I have clients that I work with one-to-one coaching them through the self-matching process that are actually matching a whole lot faster than my clients that are actually working with agencies. Um, At the time that I'm recording this video, my self-matching clients are matching anywhere from six to nine months when we're working together on creating their profile, and then sharing their profile through paid advertising and making sure that they have support for their expectant family throughout the process. That process seems to be working really well for them. I have clients that are working with um, adoption consultants that have been live for over a year and agencies that have definitely been live well over the year mark and closer to the two year mark. So it, I will say that it's going to vary dramatically. People are always going to be very curious on what is the time frame, and it is very much dependent upon, again, who sees your profile and when they see it. Okay, so I know that was a lot of detail and a lot of information, but you likely still have a ton of questions. I would really encourage you to go check out the other YouTube videos and the other podcasts on those particular areas so that, again, you can accomplish step number one here, which is getting a baseline understanding of each of the different types of adoption. Okay, so now let's talk about step number two of our four steps within the choosing which adoption path is right for you. And if you are, if you've been around me for a minute, you know that sometimes I can get a little woo woo and this might be one of those moments, but go with me on the journey. It's really important you do this step. Okay. Thank you, promise. (laughs) All right. So the next step is vision casting. I know. This may seem a little strange, but I'm a firm believer that if you don't have a plan of where you're headed and know what you want it to look like, you're not going to end up where you want to be. So I'm going to challenge you to set a timer on your phone, just start with 15 minutes and answer a list of questions. Think through what is life like for your family at the end of this adoption journey. And you want to be as specific as you possibly can. Are both, if you're in a dual couple household, are both parents working um, after the adoption? Is there maternity leave? Does the child go to child care? Um, wh- how are you paying for your adoption? Are you paying post your adoption some sort of adoption loan that you have to pay back or note or other things of that nature? And you want to walk through all of this in great detail. How I did it myself is I literally sat down on a piece of paper and I did this several different times. I sat down on a piece of paper and I'm a very trusty pencil girl. I really love pencil and paper. And I wrote out what a typical day was like. And then I took that and just kind of like what I call peel the level or layer of the onion backwards and think about the next level. Okay. So the first day was like, okay, we get up and we do this. And I literally went from the moment I, my feet hit the ground to the moment they, I got back in bed in the evening. What was my day like? 
Okay. Then the next thing I took and went through was, okay, now what are the the pressures and the things that are on me? So what are our finances like? What are, what is vacation time like? What is my maternity leave like? Like I went through every single step and thought about it in great detail. And I have a free resource that'll walk you through this. So don't feel like you're frantically having to write down all of the, all the things that I'm saying. Um, I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute, but basically what I'm challenging you to do is to think through your life in great detail. After you feel like you've written everything you can, whether that be to specific questions that I ask you in the guide, whether that be through just you brainstorming what's important to you, then I'm going to challenge you to actually go through with a highlighter. I know it's strange. I'm old school like this, but go through with a highlighter and highlight the most important things. Highlight the absolute non-negotiables. So for me, I wanted to be able to have a 16 week maternity leave. I wanted to be able to have, you know, so many weeks of vacation every year where we did intentional time together. I wanted to have small and big adventures. I went through and highlighted all of these things that were really important to me. And then I thought through, now, what do I need to do in order to enable this type of life? Is there Are there budgetary implications? Do I need to have a different type of job? And does that job then change the way that I would need to adopt because it would impact my budget? Um, do I want to have an opened or a closed relationship? And what does that look like? Now, does that change the type of adoption that I would choose based upon that? So I would go through and highlight all of the non-negotiables, and then I would make myself a list. Um, because again, I'm old school like this, I would make myself a simple bulleted list of like, here are the things that are most important to me. Because I um, am married, I have a partner that I needed to bounce all of these things off of. And by the way, it is totally normal for one person in this relationship to be driving this bus forward into adoption land, and the other person to be kind of along or the co pilot, if you will. But it's important that you check in together. So take a minute, check in. Is that are these non-negotiables the right things that this person also has in their mind as well? And so again, I would really encourage you to pick out their free resource or pick up the free resource that I have for you. And if you head on over to myadoptioncoach.com backslash start, you can sign up right there. It'll be emailed to you. And in that resource, I'm going to walk you through the whole getting started process from start to finish. And each day you're going to get a new email that gives you links to videos to watch here on YouTube that are specifically curated in an order that will be really helpful for you. And inside that guide, you have free worksheets and uh, things and activities to do again, that are going to help you walk through this process from start to finish. So do take the time to pick up the, the overall guide to specifically take the time to do the vision casting, because I trust that you're going to find this incredibly, incredibly helpful because my clients and my paid programs do find this type of content incredibly helpful. And I, I really want you friend to just be able to bust through this wall and pick the right decision for your family. Okay. So now step number three, we talked about it a little bit, but we're going to align on what are the most important steps, right? So we're going to pull out our trusty hand a highlighter and we're going to highlight what are most important. And then we're going to align with our partner and we're going to ask our partner the questions of what is most important to you? Like, here's what's most important to me. So again, for me, I, my most important thing is after we finalized our adoption, immediately after that, I wanted to be able to come home and spend 16 weeks with the child. That meant that I needed to then save money for me being off for a maternity leave because my company wouldn't pay me because I was adopting. And so that, had an implication into the path that I was choosing because that had a budget implication I needed to think through. The other thing that was really important to me was to have connection and, um, and contact back with our, uh, expectant families, our birth families at that time, since they had placed, but to have a connection with them. And so I wanted to pick a route that both my husband and I were comfortable from a contact perspective back with our birth families so that we could have a connection point for our children. And so that was important to me. So I went through and made the list of everything that was important for me. And then I moved on to step number four, which is really about picking the option that best aligned with that. 
So then when I had my list of bullet points of the like, here's what's most important to me, here's what's most important to my husband, here's what's most important to us together, then I took all of the different information and I pulled that all together to determine what was the right path forward for us. All right, friends. So there you have it. The four action steps to deciding what type of adoption path is really right for your family. The first step, get a better understanding of the different types of adoption. The second step, to set your vision of what life is like at the end of this journey. The third step, to really highlight and determine what are your non-negotiables and compare that with your partner. And then fourth step, take that list of non-negotiables, compare it to the basic information about each of the different types of adoption and determine what is best for you. Now, if you're stuck, make sure that you check out one of these resources that I'm going to give you. All right. So the first resource is the Getting Started Guide. Head on over to myadoptioncoach.com backslash start and you can download the guide from there and I will email everything to you that you need to walk through in great detail. Okay. The second, if you're like, hey, that's great. I've grabbed the guide and I still have more questions feel free to reach out to me. There's a link below where you're listening or watching this where you can set up some time to talk with me one-on-one. Or you can always leave me a comment on the YouTube or in the My Adoption Coach Facebook group and I'll answer your questions is there, okay? So I know several different options, but each of you like to do things a little bit differently. There's no one size fits all for everybody, right? The one thing that I really hope that you take away from this most, that it's most important to me is that you know you deserve support on your adoption journey. Okay, my friend? Because remember, anything's possible with the right plan and support. And I'm here with you every step of the way. I'll see you soon.